welcome to the Butterfly Mindset Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Butterfly Mindset Podcast. Today, I have Zoe Burns. Zoe, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Cyrus. How are you? Is this like a full circle moment for you? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, Zoe, we met when you were playing at USC. Yeah. I was coaching at USC. And now you're playing professionally. Yes. Um, I think there's like probably millions of little girls that want to learn how to become a professional athlete. Mm-hmm. Like, I hope so. I, yeah. I hope, I, and I, I hope, hope it so. grows, right? Yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, and so, so a lot of today, I want to kind of dive into like how you got there. Cool. So, when you were, when did you decide you wanted to be a professional athlete, or did you like? Was it like a thought process, like when you were little, or like? That's such a mixed answer. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's like a dream to have that. Um, I think when I was younger, there was part of me that did want that, was that I wanted to be a professional, but I knew that at that time there wasn't, like, a solid league around me, like, you know, in the U.S. Like, they were kind of, like, going between different, you know, different leagues were either, like, sometimes they were successful, sometimes they were failing, and it was kind of up and down. I'm really lucky that there's, there was so many um, female athletes, like, before me that have, like, really fought to create, like, a, like, a, a really good league, you know? Yeah. So now we have, like, a, uh, you know, the NWSL, which is actually, like, a competitive league, and we have people from all over the world coming to play, which is amazing. But um, when I was younger, I was very aware of the fact that there wasn't something really consistent. So for me, um, when I was young, it was a dream, but quickly it was, you know, more, more focused on college, more like, can I get into school? And it was a way for me to to make that dream happen and be able to, you know, bring that like future um whatever that was going to be um and then when I started working for it that's when I really fell in love with the sport um so I know that's like a reverse kind of of like a lot of people I think a lot of people kind of lose the love as they have to you know put in the hours and do like the tiny things and the fitness and all that stuff um but for me I was really lucky and it was actually what kind of like propelled me into the world of the sport and like really like got me to fall in love with it wait so so when you were when you were younger and the leagues are like going you know like in and out out or whatever like was that discouraging at all though very very like so so is that when you shifted like your thought process to like i want to play college i want to like like was that a was that like a shift in your mind or was it like 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 how did that how did that thought process happen well i think like you when you're young yeah and uh you know you go to your recess you go your little you know your little time off um everyone's playing and you know you have everyone you know like soccer basketball whatever it is kickball um and you know you have all these like dreams um and when you're a uh, a girl in sports yeah you spend a lot of time with guys and like naturally you know because yeah. you know you're all playing um the same sport and having a good time but i really quickly realized their dreams were almost like more attainable like although there's more of them and yeah. so that, that in a way it's more it's it's difficult obviously but they had something they could look at and chase and i quickly realized that that wasn't as clear for me yeah. as it was for them um and when you're like close um su- such in close proximity and you're training with them and all this stuff and like as you got older too like it's it that's still the case you know yeah. when you can train when you're a girl and you're training with boys and doing all that stuff like you're around them all the time you hear them talking of conversations and it's um when i was younger it wasn't it wasn't as clear for me um as it was for them yeah, it's so you know interesting. What I mean? It was like it was no, a different 100%. path, and it's also just different paths. You know, the girls went to college, yep. guys don't always. You know, they yeah. went straight to pro, and now you can see that kind of happening with the women's game, which is amazing. And you know, we're we're getting we have like a clear avenue, which is amazing, um, and we're really lucky for that. But when I was young, young, um, it wasn't always there. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like I, 
I think the first time I realized that was I was coaching and I had one of the girls that I was coaching. She was in high school. I think she was a, uh, she was going into her junior year of high school and she was like, yeah, I'm not playing anymore. And I was like, what do you mean? You kill mm -hmm. it. Like mm -hmm. you're amazing. Yeah. Like she had like every D1 school want her, you know, like right. she was such a good goalkeeper. And she was like, yeah, but like, I'd rather just focus on school. Like, what am I going to do? Like, mm -hmm. like uh, go uh, like there's, there wasn't, the, the league wasn't happening right there, yeah. you know? And she was like, why would I do this? And it was like the first time that I realized, oh my gosh, like for me, it was never as a, as a guy, like it was never a thing. Like, it was like, I want to play pro. Like, I'm going to chase going pro, and like what you said. this is what I said. have to do, and this is what I'm going to go. This and this is, is how you're going to do this it. This is how I need to train. Correct. And this is where I need to go. Um, it's it's easier when you can see it. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think, too, what's also hard is I had a lot of people growing up, like, they, of course, supportive. Yeah. Um, but, like, being like, oh, yeah, you know, like, yeah, it's, it, it would be fun, but, like, you know, you're not going to, you know, get enough money to support yourself and yeah. things like that. Like, people do make comments like that, like, more often than you would yeah. think. And, you know, that doesn't help yeah, exactly. at all. So, I mean, like, it just brings it even further to just, like, a commendable job that yeah. the female athletes before me have, like, been able to do it. So how do you, how are you, how do you deal with that? Like, because I'm sure that still happens, right? Like, yeah. Like, so how, how are you dealing with, like, when, you know, somebody says, you know, you're not going to make enough money, you're not going to do this, you should just do this, blah, blah, blah. Like, what do you do, like, when you're hearing that? And what did you do, like, growing up? Uh, you know, growing up, you just, you kind of ignore it. You go around and go on yeah. your day. It's not something that you try to, like, think about. I think now it's, as, like, an adult, it's more of, like, an actual thing that you, yeah. you have to worry about, you know? Um, but I think in just the grand scheme of life, um, if you are doing something with the purpose of money or yeah. a goal or anything like that I, I'm not sure that you're doing the right thing you know if you're doing something because you want an achievement or you want like of course those are great things to like strive for and they're they're important like it has to be about like what you're passionate about and I find that people that are the most successful are the ones that are the one are loving what they're doing so I think for me it's just every day it's focusing like do I love what I'm doing? Yeah. Yes, so I'm fine. Okay, good. And I just go on to the next thing. Yeah. And, like, people find success that way. And we might not see the path right now, but that's okay. That doesn't mean it's not there. I love that. And then you had mentioned that, like, you started you, you started falling in love with the sport when you fell in love with, I guess, the process yeah. of becoming an elite athlete. Yeah. Like, like, talk to me about what does that process look like? Like, what do you mean falling in love with the process? So I think like as I was trying to get better and kind of understanding what that really involves. Yeah. Um, and it's also different for every person. I think like with this sport in particular though too, it's like you can be good in such unique ways. Like another player can be just as good in a completely different way and be successful in this sport with completely different attributes. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm 5'2". <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not super tall and there's not a lot of sports that like you can still be successful with that. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool and kind of learning like how to be me in the sport and then how I can, you know, dive into that and really like uh, have like my unique things kind of show up in a game that's already so established yeah. and that I have so much to learn from. And so like I love film. Yeah. I think, like, I know that there's some players, oh, I have to go to, like, I have to go to a meeting again and all this stuff. Like, I love it. I yeah. think it's great. I enjoy it. I think the the entire game is, it's, like, it can be art. And I think it's really cool in that way. And I kind of, like, while I was learning about it, I kind of learned about those nuances and could yeah. be able to see it. Um, and so I really, I really loved that. Well, it's interesting because like I talk to so many different people that are like successful in whatever they do and mm -hmm. like what we what we know in about life is like you learn from experiences in life but they don't need to be your own experiences mm -hmm. but you really learn from the reviewing of the experience right yeah. like Which like you learn cool. from exactly you learn from like looking at the film and I I talk about it in business all the time right, right. where I'm like 
you got to review your film. You got to review your calls. You got to do this. Yeah. It's the same thing in the sport. Like you got to review your film because that's how you're going to be able to learn to become better. Yeah. And it's also really interesting that I want to make sure that we point out like you're a professional athlete and you said something in there. You said like, I love learning and consistently learning. Like mm -hmm. that thought process of like always wanting to learn and become better. Like where did that come from? Was that like something your parents used to tell you? Was that something that like, just like, how did you? I think, so both of my parents, I would say are learners. I don't think, I'm not sure my mom would call herself that, yeah. but just when she speaks about her life and she's always looking, she was always looking at like, where can I go? What can I do? She left when she was, I think 17. She only spoke French. She, she left where? Her home to go to school in an English school in, in an English city, didn't speak at all, and just sent herself there at a young age because she was looking to expand her world, right? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like how she lived life. So like, I think that's a different kind of learning. Yeah. Um, and that's like the way that she thinks. Um, and my dad just like loves, like he's he's intelligent guy and he'll he was in school for a really long time continues to he's always talking about the next thing he's talking about you know he's going to this conference he's doing this course he's doing like uh that's just like what he does yeah. and um they both are i think lifelong learners yeah and they love life and i think if you love life you should love to learn yeah. because there's so much out there if you think you're done your world is too small yeah and um, so I think they both go about it very differently, but I think they're both like learners. And I think that was like, I, I'm not even sure, I'm not even sure they did that on purpose, but yeah. um, I think that style of approaching life was really like instilled in, you. in me. Yeah. Um, and when you, when you um, were growing up and mm -hmm. you were like, you know, I mean, even let's even talk about before right when you're in college mm -hmm. about to go pro thinking about making that decision do you because you, you had one more year of eligibility right yeah, I did. you know and then you enter the draft like thinking about that process like what were your parents saying throughout that were they just like go for it or was it always like hey you should do this or like like what was that kind of support for you um so i actually made that decision on my own and kind of talk to them about it, like, well, obviously before I entered the draft, yeah. um, but like they knew that, but um, it was it was my choice and it's something that I had thought about a lot. Um, but their thing when I did speak to them about it was like, do you think that you have anything left that you need to be doing at school that you maybe need to learn before you go or is, that why you're going like they, they wanted to make sure that they, I was going into this with the intention of growing and not like just trying to rush because I want to yeah. go and like whatever um like but, not feeling like you needed to but feeling like it was the right opportunity to exactly grow. and it was like for that growth yeah and um like once we had that conversation they you know obviously were supportive and they were like excited yeah. about it um, but like for them, it was, it was more of it, that with making sure that I was going in with the right intentions of like growing my game and growing yeah. my career and things like that. So now you're playing professional soccer. Yeah. What's that transition from college to pro like, like feel like? Um, <laughs> I love it. I know a lot of this cause like, like we've talked about yeah. this, right? But like, I mean, I'm curious on like. Honestly, like the college game these days at a lot of schools, thankfully, is uh, pretty professional. Like, I yeah. mean, at least my like, I was lucky enough to be at a school that, you know, they wanted to prepare you for the pro life, um, and so it, it's pretty similar yeah. at, at scheduling at least. Except now I don't have school to worry about, so it's yeah. pretty great because I can really <laughs> like focus. Yeah. Um. So that's really cool. So, and then, and then like, like, what about mentally? Uh, I would say that there's the, the main difference I think is there's a, there's a lot more eyes and a lot more opinions, I would say. 
So the internet is a little bit crazy. Um, that is a major difference. Uh, but I will say that the, the college time, um, you do get kind of uh, like swept up in the season and like, the process and all that stuff and, and what's going on all the time. Yeah. Um, and college very much like replicates that, but in a shorter amount of time, Yeah. you know, um, because it's, the season's like four and a half months. Yeah. So, um, the, and then pro you have like, it's a good like nine, nine yeah. months, you know? So it's like, it's a little bit stretched a bit longer. So it's, it's almost like your mental endurance needs to be a little bit longer yeah. um, than college. But I would say it was a good like prep for it. And you like, like, I mean, you have a pretty like strong um, mentality just in general. Like, I mean, like, like being, because I know you as a, player when I was coaching you and mm -hmm. like you being like top of the fitness and like being there like like that mentality like doesn't just show up right so like like and like going to pro like you I feel like you weren't as intimidated as some of the players that I know that are amazing players going into pro they get they're freaking out before they go into their games you're just like yeah it's another day let's go play <laughs> you know so like like, was that something that your parents taught you? Was that something you learned from from being uh, from a, a coach? Like, where did you learn that? Um, actually, my parents were really good with that. Uh, like, they always, I mean, like, you can say that it's like when I'm younger, you know, yeah. and you're just like, you have a lot of energy and you're just like saying things yeah. and all this stuff. Like, um, they, a lot of people, I think sometimes and like teach their own but like we'll be like oh you need to like you know like read the room be quiet this and that like they really encouraged me to be unapologetically myself yeah and I really appreciate that because sometimes especially with women in general they're they're told to you know yeah be a little bit be a little bit quieter like you got to be nice to people you got to do this you got to do that it's a lot of you have to you should yeah um and my parents were very much do you want to is this what you want to be doing right now? And it's a very, it's a different approach, but I really appreciate it because it helped me really be able to easily like stand my ground. Yeah. And when you're able to like stay yourself and stay true to what you know and what you want, it's easier to, you know, navigate things and navigate yeah. life. Um, and I also think like being prepared, you know, you have to think of when you're going into these like high pressure moments, like if you're prepared, why are we nervous? Yeah. You know, you've done this before. The game is the game, you know? And at the end of the day, like my, it's something that my, my dad always told me was like, like excitement and nervousness. <laughs> it's the same reaction in your body. It's just how you perceive it. So if you're thinking, Oh my God, I'm nervous. Like, Oh, what am I going to do? All this stuff. Like, yeah, you're going to be nervous and you're going to yeah. be apprehensive and it's going to be a little bit harder. But if you're feeling that and you're like, oh, I'm just excited, really excited, then it's you're putting a positive spin on it and you're it's the same situation. It's just the perspective. Love so that. I think it's just being being able to be unapologetically like your own biggest fan and not worrying about like other things and other people like going going around. Yeah, I love that. And then like um, the, the, the other big piece that I want to make sure I brought up was you you had an injury was it your beginning of your college it was before I was there no I was uh, in high school it was in high school yeah and then I remember like what a year and a half ago you being like I f you're like Cyrus I feel like I'm, I'm good yeah yeah like, it was that this, was like, the best feeling I remember that I remember that like training I this, told you that yeah it was yeah like this I was like clip. finally yeah. yeah like like Talk to me about that because I think a lot of athletes, like just in general, I know I went through it, right? Like I got kicked in the face, I broke my nose, I I had an injury and then like I literally had to get over mentally like dive in at someone's feet again, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. and like as an athlete, we get injured, we have these things happen to us and then like we mentally have to get over like, oh, we can be, you know, my knee's okay again. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, like I'm good. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm good. good. Like, what's that process? Like, what was that process like as you went through it from when you got injured to like where, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think like something like an, so I did my ACL. Yeah. When I was 17. And I, uh, 
I had seen a couple of girls go through it. A few, a few of my guy friends <coughs> had gone through it. And sometimes, and the things that people say when it happens is things that like really freaked me out. Yeah. They'd be like, oh yeah, they like did their knee and then they were never the same. Right. And I was like, what? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. well, don't say that. You're like, wait you a know? second. Like, ah, uh, you know, so it's yeah. like, and those things, like, they, they kind of stay with you. And I think, like, uh, when I was going through the process of, like, coming back, yeah. that was, like, a very real fear. And so I was doing everything I could to make sure yeah. that, like, I was setting myself up, like, to be able to be myself again. Um, like we, but in, in high school, you don't have the resources you have in college yeah. that you have in pro. So I was going to like a PT, like around, you know, in my town, yeah. who's usually working with, um, people that have gotten car accidents or like yeah. things like that, like not athletes. Yeah. And I was like, so I like, I grew up in Seattle, right? So I, I told my PT and like, I don't know where he is now, but I'm sure if he ever sees this, he'll be like, yeah, I remember that. But I like, I first time I, I came in there, I literally looked at him and I was like, okay pretend I'm Russell Wilson what would you give him to do right because I yeah. was like you, I'm I'm 17 and I'm an athlete but like sometimes people don't take that seriously because yeah. I'm young or you know like I'm I'm laughing or I'm bubbly or whatever like I was like no I'm serious like yeah. I'm here to work um like pretend pretend I'm the NFL quarterback right now because right, he was there yeah. at that time but I was like what would you give him to do and so he threw out his plan and he just changed it for him. like and being that. like which I really like yeah. loved he really ran with it but it was like being like really proactive about what I'm doing and being really intentional about it because you know that was a real fear about like can I come back from yeah. this because I'm also young and I know when I come back I'm going straight into college yep. I'm going straight into the college game um I like I was looking at the timeline and I was like that's what needs to happen yeah you know so that's such a trip too because like it, it's actually how crazy is it that like other people's fears right or excuses in a lot of the times like mm -hmm. you know how many times i've heard oh i was really good i was gonna go pro but but the, uh, i hurt my knee happened. or yeah. oh but i did this right mm -hmm. like like and there's always this excuse right mm -hmm. like why they didn't hit this certain thing and it's so funny that like I mean, it's not funny. It's just crazy, though. Like, like that. Like, these people. Oh, this player was like this, but they were never the same after that. Mm -hmm. And that fear, because other people's excuses, turns into turns a into real a, a fear real fear of me. yours. Yeah. But in reality, it's not your reality. Right. Exactly. Which is a trip, I'm right? taking on somebody else's. Exactly. Perspective which, or like fear or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah. happens all the time with athletes and people just in general right like yeah. in life like like there's every day someone tells you you can't do something you can't you can't you should do this you should do that blah 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 because of their own fears and their own experiences exactly or people that they quote unquote knew yada yada so mm -hmm. like like you having the tenacity to be able to see that and just be like no like i am an elite athlete i am going to be mm -hmm. at this next level i do want to do that and like because just, I've decided because correct. I've decided to make that happen. You yeah. you you yeah. put on blinders to be like this is what I'm doing and that's it. Yeah. And it took you years to yeah. get over that mental yeah, barrier. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Literally like yeah, it did. because it did. You know, I can't it was technically what your sophomore year? When you came in? Or junior year? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Sophomore year. Yeah, because you're it's kind of weird because I, Yeah, because I don't know. you're because your years are messed up because COVID. To my, yeah, my years are a little bit messed yeah. up. But I, yeah, I'd but back yeah, to back seasons. Thought process. Weird. It was years after you were in high school. After oh, your yeah. Injury. No, either way, it's my point way is, after. Right? Yeah. And it took you years to get over that. Totally. And so, so it's just always so interesting. And, and that's why I want to make sure I shared that because there's someone else that's going through that right now, yeah. right? So I have two other questions for you. Mm -hmm. my, my second last question is where can people find you if they want to reach out to you? They want to connect with you. Um, my Instagram, probably. Okay, what's your Instagram? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zoe, Z-O-E, with another E, dot Burns, with an extra S. So, Z-O-E-E, -E mm -hmm. dot B-U-R-N-S-S. -S. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And my last question is, somebody's going through, just got injured, they're about to graduate high school. Yeah. They think they're about to go into college game. 
what piece of advice would you give them? They're nervous that they're not going to be the same player. You will accomplish anything that you want to as long as you decide to do it. I love that. It doesn't, nothing else matters. You've seen athletes get injured more times than you can count and they're the best player in the next season. Every single day is a new day and you have no idea what's going to happen, but if you just put one foot in front of the other and know where you want to go, that's the best thing you can do and the only thing you can do. I love that. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you yeah. so much for being on. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> Boom.